Petri Wine brings you... Taste Book of Gregory Hood. Tonight, the Petri family, the family that took time to bring you good wine, invite you to listen to the story of The Murder of Gregory Hood. Another exciting adventure from the casebook of Gregory Hood. And while you're sitting back listening to our story, how about enjoying a glass of America's favorite wine, port wine? Port is America's favorite wine, and you'll know why when you try your first glass of Petri California Port. Petri Port is a deep, deep red. And when you hold Petri Port up to the light, you can practically see through the glass. That's because Petri Port is so clear. One sure sign of a good wine. But the way Petri Port tastes is what really counts. And I can tell you it's so delicious, you want to sip it slowly. So you won't miss a single drop of that marvelous Petri flavor. And you'll want to serve Petri Port to your friends, too. After dinner or any time they drop in for a visit. And naturally, you can serve Petri Port proudly. Because those letters, P-E-T-R-I, spell the proudest name in the long history of fine wine. It's Monday night in San Francisco, and we have a date with Gregory Hood. A little earlier, Gregory phoned me to say that he was working late at his office, so uh, let's join him there, shall we? Come in. Hello, Harry. Evening, Gregory. Sorry to drag you over here, but I really was tied up. (laughs) That's all right. I'm quite impressed to see that the head of Gregory Hood Importers has to work late occasionally, just like anyone else. Oh, yes, Harry. You mustn't think that all my time is spent gallivanting around San Francisco. (laughs) I'm quite a hard-working man on occasion. This afternoon, for instance, we received a particularly valuable shipment from China. Some exquisite jade pieces. I've been examining and cataloging them myself. Um, is this piece on the desk part of the collection? Yes. Do you want to buy it? Well, uh, what is it? Looks like just a chunk of jade with a hole through it. It is, Harry, but it also happens to be an archer's thumb ring. Hand period, 206 B.C. <whistles> How much? In your case, Harry, I'll make a special price. Say, uh, $15,000? <laughs> I'm afraid not. I'm a little short this month. That's a beautiful specimen, Harry. I must show this to Richard Gump. He's got the finest collection in town. You know, it's funny this shipment arrived today. Why? Because the story I'm going to tell you tonight concerned a shipment of jade that I received just over a year ago. Only on that occasion, it was foamy jade, and it gave me one of the worst headaches I've ever had. In fact, I done nearly got myself Murdered? Murdered? How? Well, it's a salutary tale that proves that being an amateur detective is a foolish and dangerous occupation. I suppose the story really began about six years ago in Lieutenant Silver's office in Homicide. My old friend was patiently trying to sweat the truth out of a certain gent by the name of Lem Carter, a murderer with what appeared to be a perfect alibi. Come on, Carter. You know we've got you cold. Ain't got nothing on me, copper. Why don't you be smart? Plead guilty and take a self-defense wrap. Otherwise, it's the gas chamber. Uh, Not to that. I was in Carmel at the time of the murder scene. I'm sticking to it. Hello, Stan. Oh, hi, Greg. Still at it, eh? Yeah, this is one rat that won't squeal, Greg. I've got a friend outside, Stan. I'd like you to meet her. Look, Greg, I've no time for wenches now. I don't know that I'd call her a wench, Stan. Inflation has set in somewhat. But I think she'll interest you, and uh, you, Carter. I don't know no babes. Funny, she knows you. Her name's Dodo Waring, and she's prepared to testify that she spent an hour with you in San Francisco on the night of the murder. Okay, Gregory Hood. I know who you are, and I'll get you for this. I'll get you, but the last thing I do. (laughs) As a matter of fact, it was the last thing he did, too. But that comes later. Uh, How did you round up the girl, Gregory? I have my contacts, Harry. Uh, I'll bet. What happened to Carter? Well, he had a good lawyer and got off with manslaughter. He went off to San Quentin, still swearing I'd pay with my life for putting the finger on him. I never gave him another thought until one night just over a year ago when my friend and attorney, Sanderson Taylor, and I were having drinks at the top of the mark. I, uh, by an odd coincidence, was waiting there to keep an appointment with an exceedingly beautiful young woman. Gregory? Yes, Sandy? What's her name? Whose name? 
The girl you're waiting for. I didn't say I was waiting for a girl. You didn't have to. I know you well enough to recognize the symptoms. The red carnation in your buttonhole and the way you've been eyeing your watch tell their own story. Mm. What's her name? Sherry Drake. Mm. New conquest? Mm-mm. This is to be something of a business meeting, Sandy. And I'm sure you use the word business loosely. Don't be cynical, Sandy. By the way, much as I love your company, will you beat a snappy retreat when the young lady arrives? Huh? Afraid of competition, eh? You're aging, Gregory. <laughs> Don't worry. As soon as I finish this last report, I'll be on my way. In any case, I have a wife and two children waiting for me in Berkeley. Hello, isn't that Lieutenant Silver standing in the entrance there? Oh, sure it is. Stanley? Here he comes. Hello, Gregory. Oh. Evening, Mr. Tell. Hi, Lieutenant. Gregory, my boy, you're stuck with a guest tonight. I know. She's due any moment. I don't know about a she. You're stuck with me for the evening. Look, Stan, you are a man of irresistible charm. Some of your anecdotes are fascinating, and you play a whiz of a game of chess. Another evening, we'll have a long session together, but... I'm afraid I'm going to have to insist, Greg. What's up, Lieutenant? Lem Carter got paroled today. Lem Carter? Hey, that's the man that you put the finger on five years ago, Greg. Remember, he threatened you at the time. Yeah. I talked to guys who were in store with him, Greg. He's still swearing vengeance. No need to take that very seriously, is there? I think there is. We put a tail on him the moment he got turned loose, but he gave us a slip. And I'm sticking with you, Greg, until he turns up. If he's toting a rod, there's a parole violation, and we've got him. But I'm keeping you safe until then. I appreciate your concern, Stan, but I can look after myself. Uh, it'll be safer to let the lieutenant stick with you, Gregory. But I've got a date, and three is a crowd. Oh, don't you worry, Greg. I can be the Oh, but Stan. <laughs> well, I'm going. Not. I'll leave you guys to fight it out. Uh, what's in the package, Lieutenant? A little present for you, Greg. What is it? A wigwam for grinding smoke? No, Greg. It's a lot more practical than that. And it's something we'd better discuss before your young lady shows up. All right, but that's not all we're going to discuss, you... you duenna. Are you sure we're not boring you, Lieutenant Silver? Don't worry about me, young lady. But we do worry about you, Stan. We've been sitting here at the top of the mark for nearly an hour, and all you've done is to drink four gigantic orangeades and look gloomy. Are you quite sure you wouldn't like to take a nice long ride on the cable car and meet us somewhere later? Yes, Greg, I'm quite sure. Just carry on. Don't mind me. Mm. Uh, do you usually have a chaperone you date girls, Greg? Not as a rule. It rather cramps my style. Mm, and it's quite a style, too. Gregory. Yes? Where did you get my number? Harry Bartell gave me the idea, and by an odd coincidence, he was talking about Sherry the other night, and I thought, what a nice name it would be for a girl. So I thumbed through the phone book until I found yours. Oh, seriously, Gregory, how did you get it? Oh, excuse me, back in the jiffy. Uh, don't hurry. Uh, yes, Dan, take your time. Now, what do you suppose he's gone? My dear young lady, let's not pry into his personal life. Let's accept the miracle of his disappearance gratefully and get down to business. Business? Yes, Sherry. I have a little unfinished business that I think you can help me with. Oh, this is a new one. Go on, Gregory. I am an importer, Sherry. Two months ago, somebody switched a shipment of jade on me somewhere between Hong Kong and San Francisco. You mean they substituted phony jade for the real stuff? Yes, Sherry. I've been doing a little private snooping, and I have a hunch that a gent by the name of Hillary Pearson is at the back of it. I found out that you knew him, and that's why I called you. Oh, yes, I, I do know him slightly. But I'm sure you're making a mistake, Gregory. Hillary's a straight shooter. I'd bet on that. I wouldn't. I found out quite a bit about the gentleman in the past few days. He's just about as straight as a wriggly worm. Good evening, Sherry. Uh, oh, hello, Hillary. Introduce me to your friend, won't you? Why, yes. Uh, Hillary Pearson, this is Gregory Hood. How do you do? How do you do? Hillary Pearson. Hmm. I was just talking about you. I thought you might be. That's why I came to your table. I think I know what you're doing, Mr. Hood. You're interested in that shipment of phony jade that's slipped by your agent, aren't you? I'd be a mighty poor businessman if I weren't interested, my friend. And you somewhere acquired the curious notion that Sherry knows something about it. Have you ever thought of taking up mind reading? Funny. Very, very funny, Mr. Hood. But I warn you, you're making a great mistake. I might even say you'd live to regret it. If I thought it was the least likelihood that you'd live at all. Sherry, what are you talking about? Keep out of this, Sherry. You know what I'm talking about, don't you, Mr. Hood? Oh, sure, sure. I can recognize a threat just like the next man. Listen, Mr. Pearson, we're being chaperoned by Lieutenant Silvers of Homicide. He'll be back in a moment. Why not sit down and wait for him? He'd love to meet you. I have no interest in meeting policemen. Don't forget what I've said, Mr. Hood. He, he certainly had me fool, Gregory. Why didn't you grab him? He threatened you. Oh, he's not dangerous by himself. I'll have Silvers put a tail on him. Maybe he'll lead us to the whole gang. Well, Sherry, do you still think he's a straight shooter? He's a rat. 
I'll never see him again. Well, perhaps you can help me nab him, Sherry. Oh, I'll tell you anything I can, Gregory, but there isn't much. I had a few dates with the guy. Oh, jeepers, here comes the lieutenant again. Welcome home, Stan. All is forgiven. Anything interesting happen in my absence, Greg? No, no, just another death threat. You're kidding. I'm not. People are queuing up to kill me. Oh, well, they start a line for anything these days. Come on, Greg, give. Well, a rather oleaginous gentleman by the name of Hillary Pearson just came up to our table. In a voice simply dripping with vitriol, he suggested great Scott Sandy's come back. Not that I'm popular tonight. What's wrong, Sandy? Gregory, I was worried about what the lieutenant told us about Lem Carter, so I drove by your apartment. I didn't get too good a look at the man across the street, but I'm certain it was Carter. Good, we've got him now. Come on. How about me? I'm not not letting go of you now, Sherry. Come along and watch the fun. But, Gregory, you can't bring a girl. Look, Sandy, whose murder is this, yours or mine? Come on. Come on, everybody. <laughs> If there's any shooting, Sherry, drop down in the back seat and keep down. Don't worry about me, Gregory. The guy's still there. See him in the doorway? It's Carter, all right. I'll open the side window a little. I don't want to have to use this rod, but I'll keep it handy. Carter spotted us. He's moving back in the doorway. Well, let's see if I can talk a little sense into him. Carter, don't be a dope and try to get me. Down, Jerry. Okay, Carter, try this one off the side. We've got him, Stan. Come on. He fell down the steps when you winged him. Gregory, I think he's dead. Sherry, he's should have stayed in the car. I can't feel his pulse nor his heart either. He is dead. He can't be. I wasn't aiming to kill. There's one of your bullets in his leg. He must have hit his head as he fell down the steps. Yes, that's it. His neck's broken. He must have died instantly. Sherry, darling, you seem remarkably handy with corpses. I was a nurse's aide, Gregory. I can take it. Oh. oh, and so saying, she fainted. Okay, Sandy, I've got her. Poor kid, the whole thing's been a little too much for her. It's uh, been a little bit too much for me, too. She's a brave girl, Greg. Yeah, yes, but this rather spoils the evening, doesn't it? Nothing left to do now but take the lady home and the corpse to the morgue. Oh, uh, Stan. Yes, Greg? Uh, thanks. What for? About Carter. I mean, well, he was gunning for me. Oh, <laughs> skip it, Greg. Come on, let's get moving. <laughs> turn out the way I planned it. Oh, for me. I should have been back in Berkeley hours ago. Well, speaking for myself, I had a swell dinner. Much obliged to you, Greg. Oh, very welcome, Stan, and I'm obliged to you, Sandy, for driving me home. I'll see you in the morning. Okay, okay. good night, Greg. Good night. Good night, Stan. So long, Greg. Well, wait here until we see your lights go on. Might be someone else waiting for you. Okay, but I think you overestimate my popularity. So long. Mm-hmm. I get myself into the dumbest jam. Lem Carter gets the casket and my girlfriend's friends. Sandy's got his family. Who's there? Look, I know you're there. Come out of those shadows. Come on. Help me up, will you? Yeah, yeah, thank you. No, I, I'm okay, though. You see who it was? No. No, they must have escaped by the back stairs. Ooh, thank the Lord you brought me that bulletproof vest, Sam. Oh, so that was the present you gave Gregory at the mark tonight. Yes, yes. Lucky thing I didn't take it off after Carter was dead. But even with a steel vest, three bullets in the belly kind of knocked you out. Hello. Here's a note under your doormat. Hmm? What does it say, Mr. Taylor? Yeah. Let's see. I told you I'd get you if it was the last thing I did. Well, and it's signed Lem Carter. But Lem's dead. Oh, I get the pattern now. Somebody who wanted to kill me took advantage of Carter's release to frame it on him, not knowing he was dead already. And so it didn't work. Oh, yes, it did, Stan. I was murdered. Huh? Well, what, what bright new trick is this, Gregory? I was killed, or at least we'll let the would-be murderer think so. It'll lull him. Good idea, Greg. I'll go ahead with an official investigation. Fine, Stan. You do that, and I'll comb the underground in my own way. 
But speaking as a very recent corpse, I think I may say I'm going to enjoy solving my own murder. You'll hear the rest of Gregory Hood's story in a second. Which is all the time I need to tell you about Petri California Muscatel. Have you ever tried Petri Muscatel? I've noticed that it seems to be a particular favorite of the ladies. Perhaps that's because Petri Muscatel has such a, a beautiful golden color. Bright as sunshine. But most likely it's because Petri Muscatel has a flavor that comes right from the heart of plump, luscious Muscat grapes. Like Petri Port, Petri Muscatel is just perfect after dinner. As a matter of fact, why not buy a bottle of Petri Port and a bottle of Petri Muscatel? Don't buy one, buy two. But remember, always buy Petri. (laughs) Well, Gregory, how did it feel to be a walking corpse? Surprisingly pleasant, Harry. In fact, I'd say that a professional zombie probably has quite a gay life. (laughs) Did you find out who fired those three shots at you? Oh, yes, yes, but that comes a little later in the story. At the time, my only suspect was Hillary Pierce. After all, he'd threatened my life a short while before. True, but... And uh, this is almost heresy, Greg. You know who I suspect? Who? The girl, Sherry. And uh, may I say how much I like that name? You may. In fact, I'd like to go a little further and uh, say that... Uh, 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 Harry? Hmm, okay, but it seemed to me that if this girl was mixed up with the Jade But, Harry, the... don't you see? Because she was with us when Len Carter was killed, she was the only person who knew positively that she couldn't hope to frame a later killing on it. Mm, I guess so. Well, Greg, what did you do next? Well, as I say, Harry, Pearson was my only suspect, and I had a hunch it wasn't he. First, it wasn't his style, and second, the time element seemed to rule him out. But fortunately, I had some interesting contacts with the underworld... And I knew where to look for further suspects. While Sandy Taylor waited in my apartment, I spent a profitable half hour with some crepe hair and a bottle of spirit gum, giving myself what I thought to be quite a convincing beard. Mm, yeah, as an official corpse, I guess you had to disguise yourself. Uh, and then? Sandy and I drove over to a little hideaway on Market Street, a bar known as the Scarlet Dolphin. It has the most persistent jukebox. Oh, poor old Sandy. He was so patient with me that night. <laughs> I just called Mary. Well, Sandy, did you explain your absence satisfactorily? Yes, Mary's wonderfully understanding. Just the same, I can almost see that patient, knowing smile of hers when I tell her I'm going to a bar with you, strictly on business. Mary is a very remarkable girl. Incidentally, now that we're here, just what are we doing in the Scarlet Dolphin? Waiting to talk to Ole O'Leary. Ole O'Leary? An expert on yodeling, no doubt. Can he help it if he had an Irish father and a Swedish mother? What's his specialty? He's the Winchell of the underworld. Oh, Sandy, this crepe hair is driving me crazy. Uh, if you must go around being a corpse, Gregory, at least you deserve to be uncomfortable. Here comes Ollie now. What will it be, Mac? We don't want to drink, Ollie, just information. Mm. Uh, Gregory, what are you doing with that chin muff? Being a corpse. Ollie, can you use a fin? Are you kidding? Come to daddy. Uh, thanks, Greg. What do you want to know? Did you know Lem Carter was out of hock? Sure. Get out this morning. You know his contact? Mm, yeah, uh, just one, though, Greg, uh, a dame. Name and address, Ole. Ruby Hart. Devonshire Apartments on Turk. Thanks, Ole. So long. Okay. Thanks for the pen. Good luck, Greg. Now, when Ruby comes through the door, Sandy, remember that you're playing this scene. Oh, don't worry, Gregory. I'm not simple-minded. A child of three can... Yeah? Uh, Miss Ruby Hart? Yeah. Uh, May we come in? Who are you? I'm Mr. Gregory Hood's lawyer, and this is my secretary, Mr. Bunker. Gregory Hood's lawyer, huh? Yes. Okay. Come in. Well, what's on your mind? Uh, You may have heard that uh, Lem Carter was killed this evening. No, I didn't. My mascara is all rummy because I was reading a sad book. Now, listen, brother. If you come here to gloat, I'm liable to crown you. Oh, but I haven't. Mr. Hood feels that he is in part liable for Lem Carter's death. And he ain't kidding, brother. He wishes to make some financial contribution. He feels that if Mr. Carter had any close associates or dependents... Lem had me. That's all. And that's enough. Or it could have been. 
You've known him for some time? I've known him no time. Never heard of him before he went to San Quentin, but I had a brother. He was a buddy of Len's there. Len wrote my letters to Joe, and so he started writing to me, and I wrote back to him, see? That made me come alive all over. That letter writing. So he came out and saw me. Just once. Just today. It was just like his letters. Only with flesh and blood in him. And now he's dead. Then I got lawyers crawling around me, asking about financial dependence and stuff. It was just us, see? Ken didn't see nobody else before they got him. All our lives there was going to be nobody but us. And now when you get those Ken Hill out of here, I want to go on reading that sad book. Please believe me, Miss Hart, when I say that Mr. Hood... Cram, both of you. Go on, brother, get moving. I'm sorry if you think... Yeah, yeah, break your heart, don't it? Good night. Len's sorry that he missed you. Sorry that was your job, Sandy. Yeah, me too. Poor girl, I'm sorry for her. So am I, Sandy. I feel like a rather elderly, near-white slug. And about those financial contributions, as Ruby would say, I ain't kidding, brother. Anybody that can find good in Lem Carter deserves all I can do. But this was a dead end. No clues there. Uh, what's the next move, Gregory? The Jade Trail and the girl named Cherry. It's only 11.30, not too late to call. Uh, why not remove the beard? No, Sandy, no. She's a brave girl. Let's see how she faces up to Midnight Shadow. Incidentally, I'll play the next scene alone, if you don't mind. I don't mind. I'll wait for you in your apartment. Too late to drive back to Berkeley tonight, anyway. If your wife only knew a smart attorney, she could cite me as good ground for divorce. <laughs> okay, Sandy, wait for me back at the apartment. I have a feeling that the next scene won't take very long. <laughs> I'm so glad you came back to see me tonight. Just the same when you walked in wearing that ridiculous beard. I... You were uh, down near fainted again, Sherry? I should have. Might have been smart, too. I understand that men like a ladylike swoon. Not to the extent of complete unconsciousness, Sherry. <laughs> How are you feeling now? Fine, Gregory. Nice place you have here, Sherry. It's a modest little shack, but I like it. Gregory. Yes? You look worried. Quite frankly, I am. What's wrong? After I left you tonight, somebody tried to ventilate me with bullets. Gregory, no. Oh, yes, they did. Fortunately, I was wearing a tin vest, otherwise I'd be in the morgue now. Where did it happen? I was entering my apartment. Could you see who it was? No, no, it was too dark. The sherry. Yes, Gregory. I've got a list of questions a yard long for you, but before I ask them, I, I want to do a little checking. Do you mind if I use your phone? Of course not. Go ahead. You see, officially, I'm supposed to be a corpse. Well, I wish you'd stop being one. I don't like bearded men. Well, I may be able to take it off as soon as I've made this call. Police headquarters. Lieutenant Silver's in homicide, please. Just a minute. All right. Uh, did Hillary Pearson call you this evening, Sherry? Hillary? Hmm. No, no one's called. Silver speaking. Excuse me. Uh, this is Gregory. Hi, Greg. Did you dig up any leads? No, Stan. How about you? Nothing yet. Oh, yes, one thing you might want to know about that note we found on your doorstep. The one from Carter, yes? We've had no chance to authenticate the handwriting yet, but... Lousy with Carter's fingerprints. What's that? I say the note was lousy with Carter's fingerprints. Does that suggest anything to you? Yes. Yes, it does. It gives me the answer. Thanks, then. Learn anything, Gregory? Yes, I did, Sherry. Maybe everything. Well, before you tell me about it, come over here on the sofa. I want to show you my pet view. Moonlight on the bay. We don't need a light, do we? Oh, isn't it beautiful, Gregory? So are you, Sherry. Well, thank you, sir. You're very beautiful. And you wore gloves this evening, didn't you? Oh, don't talk so much, Gregory. Yes? Maybe I could learn to like beers. Why, you little devil! You got this coming in your lap! A knife! There's only one answer to that, darling! Oh. <laughs> That wasn't a very gentlemanly action, Gregory. I know, Sandy, but my old father used to say, never strike a woman until she pulls a knife on you. Uh, shouldn't that be unless? My old father always said until. Maybe that's why I'm still a bachelor. Did you have much of a job getting her over to the station? No, she was out cold until Silver's got there. Then she screamed bloody murder and fought like a wildcat. Quite a female. Did she steal anything? Plenty. Hillary Pearson was at the back of it. Silver's is picking him up tonight, and in the morning I'll prefer charges. 
And with Sherry on the spot, I don't think it's going to be hard to track down our Jay. Uh, she was a smart girl to realize you'd guessed her secret the moment you'd talked to Silver. Well, she must have heard him talking about the fingerprints, but it was smart figuring on her part. And on yours too, Gregory. You see, the fingerprints proved the note was genuinely from Carter. Uh, he planned to leave it by your body after he'd shot you, I suppose. Instead of which, he was shot first. Therefore, the note was stolen from his body. Only Sherry could have done that while she was performing her nurse's aid act with the corpse. The fact that she was wearing gloves kept her fingerprints off the note. Uh, she was a smart one. Darn smart. Because she appeared to be the one person who couldn't have framed the dead Carter. She thought the frame-up attempt would clear her completely. The double switcheroo. Very neat, and I nearly fell for it. It was quick thinking on your part to piece it all together as soon as you had the phone message. I almost wish I hadn't pieced it together quite so fast, Sandy. Hmm? Why, Gregory? Oh, the man asks why. Sherry was a very beautiful girl, Sandy. And the moonlight was quite potent. Sometime I must tell you what my old father used to say about that. Well, Greg, as usual, that story was a knockout. <laughs> You're the most popular corpse I've met in ages. Yes, Harry, it seems that everybody's just dying to kill me. Oh, and that girl, Sherry. <laughs> You know, Harry, there's one woman who almost got me for life. You're not kidding. Tell me, Harry, if she succeeded, would you miss me? Greg, how can you talk like that? Would you really miss our little Monday evening get-together? Why, sure. I feel a little silly talking about Patsy Wine and myself. Oh, I should have known it. <laughs> one track mind Bartell. But I guess you're right. Good detectives are a dime a dozen, but good wine. Ah. And when you say good wine, naturally you mean Petri wine. Why, the Petri family has been making wine for generations. The art of turning luscious, sun-ripened grapes into delicious, fragrant wine is their heritage. A heritage handed on down within the Petri family from father to son, from father to son. No wonder Petri wine is so good. No wonder the Petri business has grown and grown so that today the Petri family are America's largest independent winemakers. Yes, the making of Petri wine is a family affair, and the Petri family has every intention of keeping it that way. Because by so doing, they can be sure that every bottle of wine that bears the name Petri is, and always will be, good wine. Well, Gregory, what page of your notebook are you turning to next week? Next week, Harry, I'm going to tell you an odd story that took place in an extremely dense fog in the Berkeley Hills. It concerns a disappearing wife, a haunted house, and a hot clarinet player. I'll see you next Monday, Harry. The Casebook of Gregory Hood is written by Dennis Green and Anthony Boucher. Original music is composed and played by Dean Fossler. Gail Gordon plays the part of Gregory Hood, and Sanderson Taylor is played by Art Gilmore. The Petri Wine Company of San Francisco, California, invites you to tune in again next week, same time, same station. The Casebook of Gregory Hood comes to you from our Hollywood studio. This is Harry Bartell saying goodnight for the Petri family.